The committee I'm active in is called the uh, Faith in Action Committee. And so we're struggling to figure out how to really focus our work. One of the ways we try to do that is with um, a number of other congregations in the community, 18 to be specific, uh, with the Berkeley Organizing Congregations for Action. And in this congregation, uh, we have been concerned about health care for kids. So we've done a lot of lobbying and letter writing. There's also issues of health and mental health. Uh, substance abuse. Why am I drawn to this work? Well, I, I, I want to see a better world. I want to, to have uh, more justice in, in, in uh, our relationships. And it seems to me that a faith-based community is really the best vehicle to do that because it cuts across all kinds of political lines and all kinds of ethnic lines and, um, and uh, divisions that we might have. Anything that's worth um, trying to change takes generations. So you have to have a community that is, sustains itself over generations to make the kind of change that we want uh, to bring about God's kingdom. The latest one that I'm truly excited about is the Nicaraguan Connection. I traveled there in March of 2009 with the team and absolutely became, it sounds strange to say born again, but the, it, it was uh, so meaningful and so st stretching to be in that community and see how much they do with how little they have. When I was in Nicaragua, I ended up making a friend there who didn't speak any English. We ended up communicating like surprisingly well <laughs> for people who didn't speak the same language. So I, yeah, it was surprising. It was really cool though to see that like language isn't that much of a barrier. Our trip to Mississippi that we took several years ago, it was the December after Hurricane Katrina. It was work. It was some physical hard labor type of work as much as we could do so I don't have those those skills I did a lot of sweeping and vacuuming and I you know the easy stuff I was able to do I find a lot of meaning in doing things with my community but out in the world and um, not talking about our spirituality so much but kind of living it living it out about 10 years ago I was diagnosed with MS and couldn't really um, didn't feel like I could tell anyone. It was so devastating to myself that I felt like I, it was too big to share. Uh, about a year afterwards, after I was diagnosed, my daughter Linnea um, found out about the MS bike ride and decided to do it as a way that she could deal with my diagnosis. We sent out a fundraising letter to many members of the church and um, disclosed my diagnosis at that time, and I was overwhelmed with the response that I got. Linnea raised over $6,000, but I was able to tap into that strength and support and caring of the community that I had had a really hard time otherwise. And it allowed me to, to face my illness with the support of the people around me. So for the last 10 years, that has grown to the point where this last year, I don't know, I think we had about 15 people from Epworth that did the ride, and, um, and it's a place where I can be out. We're in the closet about a lot of things in our lives, and at Epworth, you're, you're able to come out. What it is about the youth ministries is that um, you get a chance to see the future. You know, right now, one of the things that's very precious for me is um, getting to spend the night in the hospital with Amy during her chemo, because, you know, chemo is something I could never even say. I couldn't say the word oncologist either. I couldn't say cancer. And bringing it that close to your life with someone that you love and so precious and young. But I get as much out of it by staying there as, you know, I feel that she might get from having me there.
I may go from this experience with never having been able to talk about cancer or oncology to looking at doing my clinical pastoral work for PSR at Children's Hospital. What Jerome Berryman, the author of Godly Play, has done is created a church service in a small classroom setting for the children. And it's a way that they have the Bible stories, like we have the scripture, they have music, they have prayer, they have the lighting and the extinguishing of a candle. Once they have a chance to be a part of a worship instead of kind of a passive member as they are in a large sanctuary, um, it's, I think it will stay with them. As I read these stories again, it's a chance for me to learn them again. And although I've always heard wonderful preachers and I'm so happy to be in a church service, when you have to be the one, you have to be the voice for the children to hear it, it's, it's really powerful. There's a, been an a, a idea at the national level of Boy Scouting that um, they don't want people who are homosexual to be involved in their, in their scouting program. And that's unfortunate. Um, what's nice, what I also like about Epworth is that uh, you know, and also the Pac-30 that meets here, and I'm sure it's also true with the Girl Scout troops that meet here, that that, that kind of, that value system is, is dismissed, okay? We're inclusive for all. It's nice to know that our own uh, charter organization, Epworth, is kind of a, a model for what scouting should be. The church council is amazing because it's like a quilt. It melds all of the ministries together. And we have the opportunity to talk about what we're doing, and there's cross-fertilization, and you know, and there's inspiration because you can see how dedicated people are at all of the things that happen at the uh, kind of different levels of the church. And that's, that's inspiring.